the sport began over 70 years ago. Now more than 20,000 people in Britain regularly race their motorbikes in over 500 clubs, with 2,500 meetings each year. There are several different classes of bikes which can be raced from 250cc to 2000, but the object's the same for all of them, to get round the track as fast as possible. This race was at Staverton Airfield, and here on the runways the really big bikes can reach top speeds of over 120 miles an hour. But it wasn't only solo racing here at Staverton. These bikes too were going to race. They're three wheelers specially built with a sidecar and it takes two people to race them. The one in the sidecar is not just a passenger though, as I discovered when I met Les Judkins who invited me to race with him on his 750 special. Oh, oh hello, how do you do? Oh, I can't Very get well, can't you? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll forget about it, you can. I'll tell you what, can you tell me now just what to do? Because I've never been on one of these things. Well, the best thing to do is to start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, we're standing at the start like this. Yeah. Uh, you have to push start them. Yeah. So um, when the flag goes, you've got to, you'll be standing here like this. Yeah. And you've got to push really hard because you've got to turn the engine over sufficiently enough for it to fire it. Yeah. So when it starts, it really goes. So you've got to get on very, very quickly. And then you get on, and you're starting nicely here, and I'll be getting on like this. That's it. Uh, you lay flat then until we come to a right-hander, and then you, like, ease yourself up and get over here. And hold there. Hold there, that's it. And you get over the back. That's it. How that's fast it. are we going to go? I was just think probably... 65, 70, I should think, do oh, this dear. one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, almost immediately after, you've got a very long sweeping ro um, left hander. Yeah. So you've got to get from there to there, while we're moving, don't forget, yeah. shaking about all the time, and get out there and hang out as much as you can to counteract the G-force to keep that wheel on the floor. Because if you weren't out there, yeah. That wheel had come up and we should tip over. Oh, thanks, Les. <laughs> Small words of comfort. You've got to get it as far out as, as you can. As far out as you can. You need yeah. long arms, don't you, really? Well, you'll have long arms by the time you finish. <laughs> Now we were ready to have a practice lap, which I'm sure I needed. But first I had to sign on as a full member of the club. Our bike was number two, and about 25 machines at a time go round the track for practice. The noise as the engines fired was terrific, and Les was right, I had to jump on fast. The idea of the practice is to give everyone a chance to find out exactly where the corners come, and only seconds later we were into one. I remembered to lean out to balance the machine and just got back in time for the straight. I managed quite well, but I knew that when we were travelling at racing speed, I'd have to be twice as fast to prevent us tipping over on the bends. These sidecars are sometimes nicknamed chairs, but I couldn't imagine why. There was certainly no seat or comfort in them, and at times it's almost impossible to hang on. Speed doesn't matter in the practice, but what is important is getting to know the course so you know which way to lean and when. At least I felt that when I went round next time, I might recognise some of the bends again. As we came off the track, we were timed at four minutes, which was roughly half racing speed, so I knew that next time I'd have to be twice as quick. The drivers make their own pit area at Staverton with vans parked full of spares. The supporters stop for lunch, but when you're taking part in a race, you don't bother with even a sandwich. With just an hour to go before the race, the bike is the most important thing. This is the last chance to check that it's in top condition. I think it must have been straining on this one, Les. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Most of the drivers were working up to the very last second, tuning their machines to get the last ounce of power, and some of them looked as though they'd never make it. But by the time the marshal came out to signal that the track was clear for our race, everyone was ready to coast up to the start. Hanging around always makes me feel edgy. By now, I could scarcely remember which way to lean on the first bend, let alone the details of the whole course. But there wasn't enough time to really worry because we were already under starter's orders. The marshal gave us our last minute instructions. Five laps and good luck. Then he was off to get well out of the way before he dropped the flag. As the first bend came into sight, we were still pretty bunched up, but just one corner began to sort out the best teams. Number 14 came streaking by, but we weren't far behind. I leant out as far as I dared, but the best men were practically scraping the ground. Les hadn't given in though, he was tearing off the leaders and I was getting rattled to bits. By now we were touching 70 miles an hour. I was beginning to get the knack, leaning out closer to the ground at every bend. The laps shot by, but after three we stopped being overtaken and settled down in eighth position. We didn't lose it either. That's how we finished. I was quite pleased, though I don't think Les was disappointed. Though having a brand new man in the sidecar must have been quite a handicap. You're going to take that up full time? No, 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 just at once. Actually, it was very exciting, really. Very hair-raising. Yeah, it was oh. a super day with that.